It's gotta be right around here. Oh. Dear Tim and Moby, can you tell me about the three branches of the U.S. government? What do they do? From Marin. Hey, lucky for you, we're in Washington, D.C. When the Constitution was drafted, the framers divided the federal government's powers between the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. The Capitol building is home to the legislative branch of government. That's Congress. The United States Congress writes our nation's laws. The Congress is made up of the House of Representatives and the Senate. Both are made up of people from every state. There are a total of 435 seats in the House of Representatives. The number of representatives sent to the House varies from state to state. The bigger the state's population, the more representatives it gets. The Senate always has two representatives per state. So, with 50 states, that makes 100. Voters elect two senators from each state, regardless of population size. Well, the Senate and the House work together, but they have different powers. Both the House and the Senate can introduce bills that become laws. But only the House can introduce bills that have to do with government spending. The Senate has authority over treaties with other countries. It also gets to approve or reject judges and other people nominated by the President. Our legislative branch helps build our laws in a way that serves every corner of our nation. The executive branch includes the President, the Vice President, and the heads of various departments and agencies. The executive branch carries out laws and approves and recommends new ones. It also directs national defense and foreign policy. The President is Commander-in-Chief of the military. A group of advisors called the Cabinet helps the President make decisions. They run different agencies and give advice on everything from foreign affairs to education. The executive branch has grown very powerful since our nation was formed. Today, the president is probably the most influential person in the country and maybe the world. Still, the president only gets two four-year terms at most, and then it's time to give someone else a shot. Finally, the judicial branch is headed by the Supreme Court and its nine justices. When someone brings a case before the Supreme Court, it means they think some law is unconstitutional. In other words, that it conflicts with the rules set out in the Constitution. If the Supreme Court agrees, the law is struck down. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the country, and their decisions overrule those of all other courts. The lower courts use the Supreme Court's rulings as guidelines. So each ruling helps shape the law of the land. Well, the branches work together in a complex system of checks and balances. The framers of the Constitution didn't want any one branch to have too much power. So each branch is limited by the other two in different ways. For example, Congress presents a bill to the president, but the president doesn't have to sign it. He can say no and veto it. But Congress can override that veto if two-thirds of the representatives in both houses agree. Then the bill becomes law. But if the Supreme Court decides that the law is unconstitutional, then that law is out of here. In addition to the checks and balances associated with laws, there are others. Each member of the President's cabinet has to be approved by a majority of the Senate. Supreme Court justices serve for life, but first they have to be appointed by the President and approved by the Senate. Congress can also remove Supreme Court justices from their posts through a process called impeachment. The office of the President may be a powerful one, but the Supreme Court can declare the President's actions unconstitutional and Congress can actually remove the president from office via impeachment. I think you get the idea. The checks and balances and separation of powers help keep our federal government in balance. Change happens slowly and deliberately, and only when a lot of people agree on it. Well, I don't think there's anything in the Constitution that says that robots can't run for public office. Would I vote for you? I, I'm, I'm too young to vote.